The first amazing fact about gravitation is that the ratio of inertial mass to gravitational mass is constant whenever we have checked it. The second amazing thing about gravitation is how weak it is. If I could explain it to the average person, it wouldn't have been worth the Nobel Prize. Until I began to learn to draw, I was never much interested in looking at art. There is a computer disease that anybody who works with computers knows about. It's a very serious disease, and it interferes completely with the work. The trouble with computers is that you play with them. Do not keep saying to yourself if you can possibly avoid it, but how can it be like that? Because you will get down the drain, into a blind alley, from which nobody has yet escaped. Nobody knows how it can be like that. First figure out why you want the students to learn this subject, and what you want them to know, and the method will result more or less by common sense. There is always another way to say the same thing that doesn't look at all like the way you said it before. I don't know what the reason for this is. I think it is somehow a representation of the simplicity of nature. Nature uses only the longest threads to weave her patterns so that each small piece of her fabric reveals the organization of the entire tapestry. If we have an atom that is in an excited state, and so is going to emit a photon, we cannot say when it will emit the photon. It has a certain amplitude to emit the photon at any time, and we can predict only a probability for emission we cannot predict the future exactly. From the point of view of basic physics, the most interesting phenomena are, of course, in the new places, the places where the rules do not work, not the places where they do work. That is the way in which we discover new rules. Once I get on a puzzle, I can't get off. It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. I was born not knowing, and I've had only a little time to change that here and there. We do not know what the rules of the game are. All we are allowed to do is to watch the playing. Of course, if we watch long enough, we may eventually catch on to a few of the rules. The rules of the game are what we mean by fundamental physics. Europeans are much more serious than we are in America because they think that a good place to discuss intellectual matters is a beer party. The most remarkable discovery in all of astronomy is that the stars are made of atoms of the same kind as those on the Earth. It has not yet become obvious to me that there's no real problem. I cannot define the real problem, therefore I suspect there's no real problem. But I'm not sure there's no real problem. It is a curious historical fact that modern quantum mechanics began with two quite different mathematical formulations. The differential equation of Schrodinger and the matrix algebra of Heisenberg. The two apparently dissimilar approaches were proved to be mathematically equivalent. Is science of any value? I think a power to do something is of value, 
Whether the result is a good thing or a bad thing depends on how it is used, but the power is a value. I think that when we know that we actually do live in uncertainty, then we ought to admit it. It is of great value to realize that we do not know the answers to different questions. This attitude of mind, this attitude of uncertainty, is vital to the scientist. And it is this attitude of mind which the student must first acquire. The drawing teacher has the problem of communicating how to draw by osmosis and not by instruction, while the physics teacher has the problem of always teaching techniques rather than the spirit of how to go about solving physical problems. Things on a very small scale behave like nothing that you have any direct experience about. They do not behave like waves. They do not behave like particles. They do not behave like clouds or billiard balls or weights on springs or like anything that you have ever seen. For a successful technology, reality must take precedence over public relations, for nature cannot be fooled. It is in the admission of ignorance and the admission of uncertainty that there is hope for the continuous motion of human beings in some direction that doesn't get confined, permanently blocked, as it has so many times before in various periods in the history of man. What one fool can understand, another can. When I was a young man, Dirac was my hero. He made a breakthrough, a new method of doing physics. He had the courage to simply guess at the form of an equation. The equation we now call the Dirac Equation, and to try to interpret it afterwards. Each piece or part of the whole of nature is always merely an approximation to the complete truth, or the complete truth so far as we know it. In fact, everything we know is only some kind of approximation, because we know that we do not know all the laws as yet. The first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Today we say that the law of relativity is supposed to be true at all energies, but someday somebody may come along and say how stupid we were. We do not know where to look or what to look for when something is memorized. We do not know what it means or what change there is in the nervous system when a fact is learned. This is a very important problem which has not been solved at all. Often one postulates that a priori all states are equally probable. This is not true in the world as we see it. This world is not correctly described by the physics which assumes this postulate. It has been discovered that all the world is made of the same atoms, that the stars are of the same stuff as ourselves. It then becomes a question of where our stuff came from. Not just where did life come from, or where did the earth come from, but where did the stuff of life and of the earth come from? See that the imagination of nature is far, far greater than the imagination of man. The highest forms of understanding we can achieve are laughter and human compassion. 
The internal machinery of life, the chemistry of the parts, is something beautiful. And it turns out that all life is interconnected with all other life.